In this problem, we're given the velocity graphs of two trains as they move toward each other. And if they start 200 meters apart, we're looking to find their final separation distance when the trains stop moving. As we can see here from the graph, we can see where the velocities of each train reaches zero, indicating where they have stopped. Now, in order to find the train's final separation, we'll first want to figure out how far each train actually managed to travel as they were decelerating. In other words, we want to find the displacement of each individual train. Now, understanding what we know about displacement and velocity and how they relate with each other, we know that uh, the displacement of a particle or object as it's traveling is the same thing as the integral of its velocity. Now, since we have a graph of the velocity here, we can find the integral of each displacement, we can find the integral of the displacement of each train as the area underneath both curves. I'll represent that with a, a different color here. Now the fact that the acceleration is constant, which we can tell from the fact that these are straight lines here, actually makes things pretty easy on us. Because if we want to find the area under each of these curves, we basically just have simple triangles here. And the area of a triangle has a very simple formula for it. It's just one half times the base of the triangle times the height of it. Uh, so fortunately for us, since we have straight lines for the velocity graphs, we can very easily just use our triangle area formula for both sides of the graph. First of all, let's make sure we understand the graph. Uh, the, the problem tells us that the scaling of the vertical axis of the graph is set by v sub s equals 40 meters per second. So v sub s, which is the top here, is 40 meters per second. And that means that each vertical notch here is equal to 10 meters per second individually. From this, we can figure out that the bottom train here, or at least the train graphed by the bottom half of the graph, it starts here, which is three notches below, meaning this would have to be three meters per second. So one train starts at 40 meters per second, and another train starts at 30 meters per second. Or rather, negative 30 meters per second, meaning this train starts off traveling left. Now let's first find the area of the top triangle, which is equal to one half times the height of the triangle, which is 40 meters per second times the base of the triangle, which is going to be in time. Now the, the time axis, or the horizontal axis, is much more clear to us. We can see that the train stops moving at 5 seconds, and that's also where the, the base of the triangle ends, from 0 seconds to 5 seconds. So let's put that down as 5 seconds here. And plugging this into our calculator, that's 100 meters, which means that one of the trains, after it starts decelerating, stops after traveling 100 meters. Now let's find the area of the second triangle, or the distance that the second train travels, which is equal to 1 half times 30 meters per second times its base, which here is going to be 4 seconds, which is equal to 60 meters. So one train travels 100 meters, and another train travels 60 meters. Now to find the final separation, we'll need to take the train's initial separation and subtract both of these components here. So if the initial separation distance between both trains is 200 meters, and one train is closing at 100 meters, reducing that distance, uh, reducing that separation rather, by 100 meters, and the other train is reducing that separation by an additional 60 meters. So let's subtract these together, and we find a distance of 40 meters. Meaning, once the trains have stopped accelerating, once they have both stopped moving, they are now at a distance of 40 meters apart from one another.